If you look at the fiscal position, Moldova has achieved quite a bit over the past uh, three and a half years. The fiscal balance is one of the lowest, at least as of last year, it was about 2.1% of GDP. And public debt is around 30% of GDP. Again, one of the lowest indicators in the region. So this creates a good starting point going forward. At the same time, if you look at the external vulnerabilities, the current account balance in Moldova is or remains one of the highest, and external debt uh, is also pretty high and is on an upward trend and growing. It shows that the external vulnerabilities of the country are uh, quite high. 2012, quickly uh, looking back, uh, last year was a difficult year. We all know about the big drought. Uh, agriculture was pulled down by over 20%. Uh, the external environment was weak, trouble in the southern Europe, uh, slower remittances, slow domestic demand, overall real GDP declined by 0.8%. This year things definitely look brighter. Real economy shows clear signs of recovery. Uh, if you look at retail sales, industrial production, uh, these still do not reflect the latest numbers that are about to come out. Nevertheless, it is clear that the, the bottom has passed and the uh, economy appears to be back on an upward trend. We've seen the uh, first quarter real GDP come out yesterday. It was 3.5% uh, growth, which is pretty respectable. In fact, quite admirable. <laughs> um, on the external trade side, after a big slowdown last year in both exports and imports, the first quarter has started with a bang. Exports in the first quarter grew 15%. Imports a bit slower, that's not that bad. Uh, overall, the trend again remains positive. Uh, the same if you look at the remittances. Uh, last year there was a big slowdown, although remittances grew in low single digits. This growth was low for, by Moldovan standards. Uh, this year remittances are on a clear upward trend, resuming double digit growth, showing improvement in external environment. Uh, to some extent. That is expected to feed into domestic demand and again feed into higher GDP growth this year. And the budget revenues nevertheless held up. Of course the budget revenues need to be uh, corrected for changes in the tax policy, but overall if you look at the first quarter, the budget execution on the revenue side has been extremely well. So overall things were very positive. On the inflation side, I will not say much. I think a lot has been already said by the, by the governor, but inflation has been on a, a downward trend and has been under control. And despite the recent uh, push from the food prices, we do not expect, uh, again, any uh, major pressure uh, down the road. In the financial market, bank credit conditions continue to improve. Uh, if you look at the interest spreads, uh, the yellow line is the uh, interest spread in lay, and by interest spread I mean the difference between the lending rate and the deposit rate. It shows the margin that the banks charge. It also shows the degree of competition in the banking sector. And this spread has been declining uh, since the crisis, since 2010, and has almost reached the pre-crisis level. And as we've seen in the previous presentation, the nominal interest rates are at the uh, historic lows already. So it's a good time for borrowers in the market. Although not necessarily such a good time for the banks, if you look at the uh, uh, non-performing loans or problem loans in the banking system, they have, uh, after reaching a peak of uh, almost 17% in 2010, they have declined significantly but began to rise again last year. And uh, despite showing some signs of stabilization, they remain a concern. So putting this all together, uh, our outlook or our uh, projection for 2013 is that growth will rebound on account of agriculture. Our forecast uh, that we voiced at the end of last year of uh, around 4% for this year remains valid. It could be higher based on the number that came out yesterday. Uh, inflation, we believe, re will remain around 4%, but in any case within the target range of the National Bank. The current account deficit will likely widen uh, a bit further as the domestic demand recovers. And as concerns the fiscal balance, uh, um, it's too early to call, so to speak. Uh, there are a number of initiatives that have been adopted on the expenditure and the tax policy side earlier this year. Their impact 
remains to be seen. And I think uh, f uh, meeting the previously set uh, fiscal balance targets will require some effort. So I will reserve the judgment. We will have a mission starting tomorrow. We will discuss these issues with the authorities. Until then, uh, let me not make a projection. Now, the global view on what are the risks and challenges, what, is, uh, w what needs to be done. I think in the short term, uh, the external environment presents a big risk and the domestic political situation. I'm not going to say much about the political situation, but the external environment showed some signs of improvement in the first quarter. We hope this will continue. If that is the case, I think this year could be a good year. Uh, recent, recent fiscal slippages. A number of uh, uh, policies that have been adopted in the context of uh, political instability in April and May uh, risk unhinging the fiscal position. We believe it is important to bring the fiscal situation back under control, review some of the policies, in particular regarding agriculture taxation, additional expenditure, etc., to make sure that the fiscal uh, prudence is not broken. And uh, if it does, again, it's a risk to macroeconomic stability in our view. There are concerns in the financial sector that we see in the press all the time. There is an issue of uh, resolution of bad loans in some banks, and there is an issue of transparency of shareholders. This is, this is the challenge for the short term. Resolving these challenges will require coordination, political will. It will require uh, coming together in term for the government and parliament. And all of this combined will help to maintain macroeconomic stability. Now, we talk about macroeconomic stability at all, uh, a lot, and uh, many ask why. And, uh, of course, macroeconomic stability is not the end in itself. It will not make people richer by itself, but it is a precondition for growth. It is a precondition for development, and that is why it is extremely important uh, to keep it in place. Oops. Uh, uh, the, as I mentioned in the beginning, there are many things that we can talk about. Education, health, agriculture, structural reforms, energy, etc. But the big overarching objective, in our view, for the uh, economy is to improve the competitiveness of the business environment. And competitiveness is not just about the exchange rate, it's not just about the prices, it has many dimensions, and the key of them are the justice system, the quality of the tax and customs administration. I can talk more in the discussion section what exactly we think needs to be done. The quality of the labor force, that has to do with the reform of the secondary and vocational education and containing the labor cost in line with productivity. And the quality of infrastructure, public investment in infrastructure, the quality of that investment in particular. I believe that these four pillars if pursued vigorously by the authorities, could dramatically improve the business environment and could dramatically improve the well-being of the country. All the other issues uh, reserved for now. So this is it for now. I'm sure we'll discuss more during the discussion section.